what happened in August. Well, we're here to tell you. And we're starting right now. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And I'm Rob Howe, the rock star realtor. If he says so. <laughs> Welcome to our September issue of my monthly market update. And today we're going to be talking about August 2020 numbers. All right. Yeah, you ready? So Rob and I had this bet in our show. Yeah. Um, how August ended up and actually surprisingly it took a dive sort of <laughs> I don't think that's what I would call it but yeah you know sort of sort of um, I think maybe because July was too hot and people just did not want to shop here in this desert <laughs> ah, no. if the market if it's hot outside the markets hot I don't think that's what happened okay I, that's my that's, that's me but you know, we we kind of we split, we split. We had a, two bets, right. we had two bets, and we split on those two bets. So last month for August, we had two thousand nine hundred and ten single-family homes that sold, yep. which is down twelve point five percent from July, and down eight point one percent from year over year. So that's huge. Yeah. So I lost that bet. Yes. I said that our numbers would be within three percent margin of the of the previous month's uh, numbers, and I lost that bet. But really, I should have known, and and uh, because you know our inventory has remained low. So if you don't have enough homes to sell, well, guess what? What? You're not going to sell a lot more homes. True. So since we had less homes. Which brings to the next point, the median sales price went from three thirty in July to three hundred and thirty five thousand in August. Wow. That's like the the most record high that we've been setting record highs this year. It's chunky. It's yeah. chunky for sure. And I was right about that one. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes like he says, hand in hand, no yeah. inventory um, means higher prices because yeah. people are bidding for the homes that are just phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. No, there's just you know when the good ones come out, they're gonna get snatched up and uh, you, you know multiple offers. Yep. So this was up 1.5 percent from July and up 9.8 percent from the prior year. So we are cooking and rocking and rolling yeah. from last year. Yeah. Wow. During this whole craziness that's happening across the world. Right. There's reasons for it. There's a <laughs> lot of reasons for it. We can talk about those all day long till the cows come home. Uh, you know. So. It's it's a wonderful thing that we're experiencing that the market is holding up and there are good reasons for it. Uh, and one of those reasons would be that I think people really are looking. They're, they're they they need that solid home. They need to be really stable. And the, and Vegas is a market that kind of hits in between. Uh, I think some of where people want to go. People are kind of getting away from the more populated areas right. and the more expensive areas and going to places that are less populated and less expensive. Well, Vegas happens to hit kind of in the middle of all that. And uh, you know, you can still have your city life, but you also don't have the expense of being in a place like maybe California. Right, and a lot of people that are relocating from the most high-end places or expensive places, they're checking out Arizona, they're checking out New Mexico, they're checking out Colorado. However, what we have to offer that these other states don't have to offer is no state income tax. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people come here is because of the relief of not having state income tax and then working from home. So they're working from home and they don't have to spend so much money living in say California, for example, where the taxes are crazy high. Yep. And that is probably going to continue. The faucet is on mm -hmm. for Vegas when it comes to that. There's a number of other things that we can get to into. I probably we won't need to get into detail right now about that because it, it does, you know, there's there's a lot of projections I think that we both have that we can make for the future. But that is one to really keep an eye on. How yes. much of that influx, how much the faucet stays on for Las Vegas and having new people coming here. We'll see. We'll see. 
You can always watch the Rob and Ange Real Estate Show. We always go into more detail about what's happening yep. with the Las Vegas real estate market. And even some predictions from some guests. Yes. And that airs every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So stay tuned. We will be creating a channel on that. And it's just a fun show, right? Yep. Channel coming soon. Very own channel. And man, I just think we're going to keep cranking away. There is real, if, if real estate is one thing right now, it is interesting because there's so many factors, so many changes right. that are constantly happening. And we really feel like we have a beat on what's happening and that's why we're doing this. That's why exactly the reason why we're starting, you know, we've started doing this and in, in more frequency because this, there's just constant information that you need to know. Exactly, we have a message and the message is for you guys, right? That's right. Yep. Either that or we're just talking to ourselves and we like <laughs> oh, we to like hear to talk. <laughs> Maybe both. Blah, blah, blah. Hello. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe him. More him. <laughs> just kidding. I like to talk. So last month in the luxury market, we had another increase. We sold 69 homes last month compared to July 64. I mean, a five home increase. But the most shocking part about this is that the medium price on luxury homes increased by 100,000. It went from 1.35 mil to 1.45 mil. So that's yeah. like huge. I mean, we've been saying that these sellers are like accepting whatever type of offers they get, but it looks like they're selling for more than what they're asking for. Well, I think the increase is, is driving that. Right. So you know that you have more, I mean, we talked about it earlier, these buyers are selling more expensive homes in other places and they're coming here and they're chunking down some money and, and down payments and uh, on, on much nicer homes than they would be able, than would be available in those price ranges right. if, where they're at. So I think that's probably what's driving that big time. At 69, it tells me a little yin yang in there though, you know? So we'll, <laughs> we'll see what that all means. I got a 69 touching, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's your sign, isn't it? I know, I'm just sign? kidding. Uh, I won't add that to the thing. <laughs> add it, it's fun. Okay, it's my birth sign. <laughs> we like, Power to the we people. like double long times. We like being a little edgy. Yeah, that's right. We're not afraid to say sixty nine makes an eyebrow raise. <laughs> yeah, number yin and yang. That's right. And he's a Pisces, so he has the yin and yang. I do. I, I do actually. Yes. yes. I don't know which way I'm going, <laughs> but I'm coming and going. So that's great. Exactly. <laughs> So for August, we had a total of 3,887 new listings, which is up 5% from July, which is really good, but still down um, from the prior year. Way down. Yeah. Way down. I mean, here's the thing. You're getting the message sellers a little bit, but uh, you're not coming out in droves. Uh, this is the time to sell if you have it in mind to sell. Just, just plain and simple. Get your home on the market as soon as possible. Uh, that is my advice. I think that's Anne's <laughs> advice as well. That's our advice for the last, what, three, four months? Yeah. We so, don't know how many times we can beat it over the head, but... I realize, so. yeah, I realize there are some of you that cannot sell. That is, that is part of the issue in which why we are in the situation. You can't sell because you can't buy right now. If you lost your job or if you were furloughed or a number of things that have disqualified you for now from getting a loan, you're in that pickle and you're part of the reason why we're not getting more inventory on the market. Right. So that's, 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 that's a little fun. insight. That's a little insight as to why we're continuing to stay low inventory wise. Well, my other insight though is because of the, um, the renter moratorium. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, you can't, you, you got, you got uh, some of our inventory that's out there are investors that are just putting their property on the market, even though it can't be shown with tenants in there. Exactly. So that's another hidden part of our market. Why again, we're getting, you know, you look at it and you go, well, there's this many homes, but then you disqualify several of them because they can't even be shown. Like almost like a third or a fourth there's of them. Uh, over a thousand of them, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of homes. And last year at this time, we had a lot less of those types of homes available as far as tenant occupied homes. The reason why is because they're sitting, they're not selling. I mean, that's a pretty thick skin thing to purchase a home with a tenant in there. Now you got, now you're buying into a problem. So not a lot, <laughs> not a lot of people want to do that. And uh, it makes no sense. <laughs> right. So there's, 
definitely, uh, again, some projections that we'll be making on what's coming and what how that's going to affect our market in the future. We're definitely going to want to talk about that some more. Yeah, so yeah. So we'll cliffhanger that a little bit. <laughs> to the end of Russia. We have answers. Yes, That's do. the truth. We don't know if they're correct or not, but we do have answers. <laughs> well, Cray knows. I'm just kidding. You have questions. We have answers. So there were 4,639 homes listed without offers for the month of August, which is down 3.5% from July and also down 40.3% from the prior year. Meaning last year, that number was around in the seven, 8,000 range. We had a lot more listings on the market than we do now. And we yeah. are very, very... Um, we're anemic. Know, anemic, yes. We're anemic, and, but, I mean, but... This is this is an interesting thing, Ange, because I think right now it is sort of saving the day. It is a supply and demand. If we were if we were oversupplying the demand, then we would potentially see values go down. So this is what we have to pay attention to as time goes on here. It, do we continue with an, a relatively anemic market, which actually helps us stay stable? I, I disagree with that. How does it make you stay stable when the median price keeps on going up? That makes it unaffordable to the layman, the, you know, the average Joe. They can't, it's buying them out of the market. They can't afford it. So well, this it's not is stabilizing true. those people. Well, this is true. Uh, I, I think that's that's definitely going to be, but I think with what we might be able to see on the horizon, right? some of those, th that might change, okay? So... I think if it was if it's up to me, right. I would take the run while we have it. Right. Take the run, take the upswing while we have it, and you sellers pay attention. Take that upswing while we have it. If you if you're if you have motivation to do it, and you have other you know reasons to sell right now, then maybe you should think about this. But also take it while we have it because we don't know the future and right. what's going to happen next. So I I prefer that we're going up. Because I also know that it may mean that I mean, there may be another side of this, that we, we go down a little bit in the future. True. That we flatten out, that uh, our, we can't hold up this median home price uh, range that we're in right now. Right. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, I always think of always all sides to the story, not just trying to get the price up for the sellers right, to make a course. profit, but I always look at it as that, you know, there are other people that can't afford the market now. No. And we're going to drive out the average Joe because of what? What's minimum wage? Well, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, 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 absolutely. I mean, if you're on minimum wage, unfortunately, it's I mean, you can hardly afford rent in Vegas right now. Right. It's, that's right. not that's not even. But I I I know what you're saying. I agree that we. I've said this since the very beginning when I got in real estate. Is that I don't want to see us going up leaps and bounds. I mean, I I remember. When, when we had the Great Recession, years before that, it was like huge percentages properties would grow in value, right? We don't want to see that. We want stability. Stability, okay? We're, we're, we're doing a little jumps now, but it, <laughs> it all makes sense as far as why it's happening. And I do agree with Ange that at some point, we don't need to see this thing keep climbing up. No. Everybody loves to have, have more value in their properties, but we want realistic value that we can sell that we can have buyers available to purchase at, you know? Yep. So. And you know, what's also driving the market right now is obviously the historically low interest rates. Not only yep. not having the supply, but also the low interest rates. Yes, and that, that, that swings back to why I think we're seeing higher prices as well, because people are coming out of rentals that cost them 1500 and above a month. And then they're finding out that they can have a payment that's less than that on a property that's exactly. around three hundred thousand or three fifty, and they are ecstatic to pay less for what they are renting to own, right? Especially right now. And stay tuned. I just did a video. I'll be posting it soon. It's three reasons why to sell in twenty twenty, and three reasons why not to sell in twenty twenty. So that's actually some good point. Yeah. You know, three reasons why you should, and three reasons why you shouldn't. Anyways. Um, so I can't think of three reasons why you shouldn't. I'm interested in it. I will be watching it. <laughs> There's three reasons, absolute great reasons why. But, you know, I'll save that. My for feet are my concreted video. into my foundation. I can't sell. <laughs> <laughs> so our months of supply dropped last month. We went from 1.6 in July to 1.4 in August, which is 
We are very, very, very anemic. And yeah. we've been saying this till we're blue in the face, but you sellers, if you're ready to sell and you're able to sell, now is the time to sell, period. End of story. Yeah. Right? So this is making it a seller's market. And a healthy market, a balanced market, is when it's six months of supply. It's not a balanced. Close. We're yeah. getting close. And I, yeah. and I would say there's some, there's like we were talking about earlier, there's a little bit uh, less of actual supply in there because some of our supply is tenant-occupied. Tenant exactly. So, I mean, and if you're a landlord and you're watching this, don't list your home while you have tenants right now. I don't even show my clients those listings, so you're yeah, just going to be sitting difficult. on the market you, for a you, long time. You got to have full tenant cooperation, and that means that they've got to sign documents, and I mean, you got to have a lot of safety procedures and everything like that, which is definitely something that we should be going over. We're always aware of the safety and the precautions and we even when we have listing appointments or uh, uh, buyer appointments we're very safe we we constantly interact with each other so obviously us sitting close <laughs> together is something that we do often but when right. we're with our clients and we're not out partying and we're, we don't go out and, and, and mingle with a bunch of people we really care about our business we care about you and so we understand exactly, and if you're in a situation where you need to be safe, uh, if you're at a high risk uh, 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 individual, we want to make sure that we don't have any issues uh, involving that right now. Right. It's funny, Rob received a comment from one of your friends Yeah. that asked why we weren't wearing masks. <laughs> while we filmed but you know I'm, obviously people don't understand the situation you know like he said that we're very cautious and um, it's not like we go out and party and meet tons of people all the time and if we are out showing houses we take the proper precautions absolutely and our crew here is you know very safe as well yeah <laughs> guys speak up I'm not hearing anything <laughs> So 61.3% of the closings for August was on the market for 30 days or less. In July, this number was at 59.7 and in August 2019, it was 52.4% of the homes was on the market for 30 days or less. So that picked up a little considering last month it was at 59.7. Um, however, there are still homes sitting on the market longer, yeah. but we can take this into effect because of one, 10 occupied homes. And two, homes that are outdated, um, may need some work, or overpriced. overpriced. Overpricing exactly. is, I mean, I would, I would definitely point that, that out for last year, why we had very similar, it's been consistent, right? you know. So, you know, basically trash listings are trash listings. <laughs> and they always move up our days on market, because really, if you list with Ange and I, I mean, we don't have properties that sit around for 30 days. I mean, I, I I can't remember when I had one that even lasted that long. You know, if I think the longest I had was a couple years ago for 21 days, but most of my listings are under four days. Yeah, you get them sold fast, and it's not because we're not pricing them well for our sellers. It's not because we're giving away the farm here. It's because it's listed right. Exactly. And you know, if you ever watch our channels, we have videos on how to get your home ready, um, right. all those tips and tricks for you as a seller when you're looking to list your home. Yep, and so big focus of mine, Rob Howe Rockstar Realtor on YouTube. You can check that out anytime. Of course, Angie's channel, <laughs> she's really been focusing on sales as well because that's what we think it needs to happen. More listings. Listings. And we're not doing this or saying this to be greedy agents and uh -oh. these agents don't know what they're talking about. We know what we're talking about and we know how to sell and we're not being greedy and we're not being greedy trying to get these listings. We're just telling you as real estate agents from our experience and what these numbers are telling us is that we need listings. Yep. Straight up. Straight up. And if you're waiting around, if you think that, uh, you know, it's going to get better later, I just wouldn't take that bet. That's no. all. No. I hope things remain very stable. but. We know what we know right now. Exactly. That's it. Buy the rumor, sell the fact. <laughs> Buy the rumor, sell the fact. I owe that one to my uh, put to my friend Keith Ainsworth. Buy the rumor, sell the fact. It's a great uh, little say saying. Basically, it means you know the rumor. You can buy, there's a lot of rumors out there, but you absolutely sell the fact. So when you know it, you know it. And right now we know it. We know what's happening in the market. We know that if you put your property on the market, you can get it sold for top dollar and have 
buyers, you know, more than one, maybe right. even multiple right. offers. Um, so that's. And then, you know, there's less competition now. So if you do wait till next spring, there's going to be more competition because everyone's going to be wanting to sell their home then. So right now you don't have competition. Yeah, this is, this is the, that, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. What's your competition like right now? And what can we look out in the future and say it might be like uh, in the springtime? when we would normally traditionally see a lot of people come out anyways, right. because spring is a wonderful time to put your home on the market. But, you know, hey, people are gonna have to do what they have to do. We realize we're giving you the information right. and it may not be something that's uh, viable for you right now. That's totally understandable. And uh, there's no reason why you should make something happen if it doesn't work for you. But if it was on your mind, it was something you were gonna do anyways, you know, yeah. Take advantage of it. You know, and maybe you can't afford to buy a new home now. Maybe rent a place for a year when everything cools down, hopefully. Yeah. Right? I mean, I definitely have people that are looking to do those timing moves. Right. I, I say be careful about that. I mean, obviously, you just you want to make sure it's something that you can do, you, that your resources allow you to do. You don't want to put yourself in a pickle. Right. Uh, because you were trying to do a timing move, which is basically, oh, I'm going to sell now while the market's high, and then later I'm betting that the market will go down and I can buy uh, at that sure. point. Those are timing moves, and you know what? Some really intelligent people that see things can, can do those and uh, get away with it, and maybe sometimes they get lucky, but, uh, yeah. you know, just be careful. Exactly. If you'd like to download the full report provided by the Las Vegas Realtors, I provide a link down in the description below. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and subscribe to my smash channel. Smash the that surprise, button. subscribe button. <laughs> smash it. Smash it. Thank you so much for watching today, and we will see you guys on the next one.